where the heart is came to mind. I already set it down here because, you know, my family is here. Why here is the question we ask every Tuesday. The segment has been going on for a long time now, but it's undergoing some changes. Uh, our good pal GP, who used to go out and field report the segment, has moved on to some other things. So, for the time being at least, we're inviting some of the interesting expats that have chosen to make their life here in Korea into the studio to find out what makes them tick and why they have gotten the Korea bug and why they decided to stay and do some interesting creative ventures. Today we have a guest who is juggling work in the U.S. government and creating a community for expat entrepreneurs as well as launching his own business. His name is Jason Holmes. Hey, Jason. Hey, how's it going? Great to meet you. Um, so, yeah, you're, you've got a lot of um, torches up in the air, juggling them. Yeah, that's, that seems to be my normal day-to-day. -day. <laughs> that seems to be just how you roll, right? <laughs> yes. So you are uh, presently active in the U.S. military. That's correct. Okay. And uh, I think, you, what's your sort of job description, roughly? Um, like an engineer and technician. Engineering is, technician. Will be like the equipment on the civilian side. Just okay. work with engineers and You make them. Uh, the trains run on time and make sure that things don't fall apart. Essentially, I make sure that they run on time, the engineers, and they okay. don't fall apart. <laughs> All right, cool. How long have you been in Korea? Been in Korea since 2013. 2013. Yes. So, as things go, kind of a newcomer compared to these, uh, Long timers, uh, mm -hmm. like like me, I guess, <laughs> and other people that uh, seem to um, make a was was your decision to come over sort of just the deployment and like I'm going to get this done and move on in the world or, well, originally I stayed in Japan and then I went to Portugal okay. and I was like I got to get back to this area. No kidding. So I liked Asia that much. I like Asia that much, and plus because my first round I played around too much and I was like I missed out on, I missed out on too many opportunities okay. to improve business wise right. so i told myself once i get back to this area i'm going to just stay here as long as possible in general when you're in uh your your full-time military mm -hmm. uh I, i've never been in the military so i don't know the parameters i mean i always had the conception that that's your life and you're in a tunnel vision kind of setting but do you have the latitude to say mm, well i've got this much time on the side i'm going to launch a, a venture or i'm going to do this or that like surprising U.S. military people, and just this disclaimer: this is not endorsed by the U.S. government at gotcha. all. This You're is, here purely uh, as Jason Holmes. Purely as Jason Holmes, my hundred percent opinion. But most of us, we have um, lives outside when we're off. Okay. You know, and some people are like bodybuilders. Some people are entrepreneurs. Some people are um, violent community activists. So we're not just one thing. Some of us are. Go, some people go to college full time as well. Yeah. So we're well diverse and well rounded. We're not like your old school Vietnam type right. of. Right. You're not just going to the barracks and reading comic books after no, your, your not job at all. is done, we waiting are, for the next day to come. Exactly. You've got a full on life afterwards. Mm -hmm. We're trying to improve ourselves because we know that this is not going to last forever. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Eventually, the deployment ends, or you're going to retire, and or you uh, get hurt. Yeah, so it's possible. Mm -hmm. right? So you got to have a backup plan. Exactly. And a lot of, I suppose, a lot of the uh, job descriptions in the military tend to be quite specific to military tasks. Um, you can adapt them later, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, it depends. Like something like my job, yeah, I can do it on the outside if I choose to. Okay, and there's a lot of skills I've developed, like management, leadership, um, project management skills. Yeah, yeah. So those I can translate to the outside world. Oh, there's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. No doubt about that. The basic uh, characteristics that uh, the military builds are also kind of an asset too. So you are going into the apparel business, as I understand it. You yes. know, you, you've gotten the 411 around here. We don't specifically mention companies and whatnot, mm -hmm. but we can we can certainly skirt around all of that and talk about how you got interested in this particular thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you are semi-obsessed with socks. Do I have that right? <laughs> yes, I'm wearing, a, I'm wearing some You're wearing right now. some of your own <laughs> socks My now. own socks, yes. Okay, that's good marketing. <laughs> yes. Uh, how did that process come about? You do, you're you in the military and all, one day, bing, oh, I'm going to make socks. Well, I took a holiday, like a week off, and went to Hongdae because I was like, I want to clear my mind and think about something I can do as a side business uh -huh. and it was during the Christmas season and it was like a bunch of socks in Hongdae and then it hit me so I just do some socks <laughs> <laughs> are we talking about crazy socks because if I it, go to Hongdae you can see socks with Psy it's, Nobama, yeah with, it's yeah. all kinds of different Pokemon. socks yeah Pokemon all that um and then I did like some market research in the states and I was seeing that the sock market I feel is growing especially in the men's sector 
So there's a lot more growth in comparison to the female sector. It's overly saturated with socks. So I was like, okay, looking for socks, longevity, men sector is the way to go. Is that was this purely sort of a uh, a cold capitalistic decision, or had you <laughs> <laughs> had you always been sort of you know um, I I'm I'm itching to get into the retail space and create a brand and all of that stuff. So this is probably my second attempt at uh in the retail okay. industry. Um, the first attempt was based off of a YouTube channel I did while still serving. Oh no kidding! And it was t-shirts, and then I gave it up. Because it was just too much. It's a crowded market, t-shirts. Yeah, t-shirts is oversaturated. Yeah, yeah. it's so easy to knock off. You, <laughs> the minute you start selling, you've got 10 people making the same t-shirt. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Because it's so easy. You can buy your own on t-shirt kit at home and make your own t-shirts real that's fast. It. That's it. So mm -hmm. that witty t-shirt that you came up with, uh, that that's a, you better sell a lot on day one and two, mm -hmm. or that's over with. So what did you learn from the t-shirt venture, though? Well, what I did learn is that you need, with any brand, you need to build your tribe essentially uh -huh. you need to build a group of people who are willing to do any and everything for you so if people do copy you they're not going to abandon you because they was with you from the beginning yeah so that's what i learned from that is focus on brand equity in a sense not just making sales right off the bat especially in the social media space you yes know, the process is the product mm -hmm. you know if they know you and they like you uh, and they, they view you as authentic. I think mm -hmm. authentic is, is one of the key things, right? Yes. They latch on to you personally, and then you come out with this next thing, and they trust it, and they, they say, oh, that's cool. Exactly. They want to vicariously be cool. So uh, are we talking crazy socks here? Uh, not right now. Not crazy, but more like social conscious type of um, socks. Designs are based off of like um, Bitcoin and other movements in the States or whatever. Okay. So things that people can connect with. Concepts that people connect. Are you telling me you sell Bitcoin socks? Yes. <laughs> That's the ones I'm wearing right now. Okay. All right. So just in case you wanted to dis just display your love for Bitcoin to the world, Jason Holmes is here to sell you some socks. Uh, and uh, so you're, these are causes or themes that uh, you said you can feel good about. That you can feel good about and you can you feel proud to talk to people about. Uh -huh. So a good way to start a conversation. Like I said, Bitcoin socks, you know, for the Bitcoin enthusiasts like myself. Uh -huh. So it's a good way to represent without being coming off all oh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. But hey, check out my socks. They might have a question. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very socks as conversation starter. Mm -hmm. I like it. Now, are you, um, how, how, how do you even go about setting up a supply and distribution chain for socks in your spare time? I mean, are you doing <laughs> the whole uh, right down to the organic roots, Dong Dae Moon kind of thing, and finding materials and people who make it and this and that? Um, Dong Dae Moon was my first stop, and just going to the the retail, the, the vendors there, sure. and, and then I went on Ellie, I went on a website and got connected with an actual Korean manufacturer who's done business with international companies, and me and him met up, and and we, now we do business for manufacturing wise because people like made in made in Korea products. How big of a team do you have to marshal in order to put together the beginnings of a sock company? Obviously, you need a designer, or is that you? Um, I come up with the concept, then I give it to someone to uh, finish it. So I use freelancers, mm -hmm. you know, to, um, to leverage my time and because okay. I don't have a lot of time. My and there weekends, are there's yeah. all kinds of hubs online where you can connect with the right freelancers exactly. to do it. Mm -hmm. So you do that. Mm -hmm. You get maybe like a prototype of the sock design that you want. Yep. And then you shop that to the the, the big. Uh, manufacturer is that well, right? Well, now that I have the manufacturer I want in line, um, we do the design, send it to him. He creates a, a sample. I review it, like it. Then we start doing a little sample marketing to see if there's any interest for the design. Okay. How do you do that? Uh, easy. Just there's, then there's bloggers in the States who I work with who have uh, infl who already have influence in the fashion so they send them some socks. Send them some socks, and okay. then they take a few photos. Then they let me. They let me use those photos on my social networks, and then they you link post back it on to theirs. Them and mm -hmm. Creates this sort of Just, SEO karma, doesn't it? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Interesting. And are you storytelling online? Are you like uh, creating? Are you still doing YouTube, for example? Um, I'm think YouTube for my old brand, no, but I'm looking to do more YouTube for my current brand I'm working on, and I actually have a meeting later on to go talk about our next infomercial the next day to <laughs> get out there and sort of tell mm -hmm. the story behind the socks because it's yes it really is you know the the whole process of bringing it to fruition is i think part of the um the appeal to the the community the tribe as you mentioned yes um are you, are you crowdfunding at all not right now 